Just wanted to do a quick video on how I'm balancing my Fidal rotor. So this thing was balanced from the factory with epoxy and over the 21 years this thing has existed, uh, all the epoxy came out. So it was completely unbalanced. Uh, I replaced the bearings uh, with brand new ones. Um, and here's my balancing setup. It's pretty uh, interesting. <laughs> so uh, this is uh, like a weight rack and it's just a convenient place to hang this thing and uh, yeah, spin it. Um, so I 3D printed these bearing holders. Um, they just literally just hold the bearings. A couple of set screws to hold the uh, bearing in. And uh, right now I've got a, th I haven't really used this yet, but uh, this is a three groove pulley that I made to use these O-rings to drive it. Something like a GT belt might be better. Um, let's see, I've already done a pretty good amount of balancing on this already, so it's actually not too far out. I'm gonna do some more uh, fine tuning on it. This is a cap that uh, has to go on before the bearings. This is what mounts the bearing into the uh, motor end cap. So I just hot glued it to this so that it doesn't rub on the shaft. That's why, uh, yeah, and that nasty sound you hear is this drill. <laughs> let's see, so I'll show you what I've done so far. So that's a JB uh, weld steel stick. That's what it's called. I just put this second one on here. Uh, so far I've got 24 grams here, 24 grams here, and then there's a little bit of polymer clay, which I'm using as a weight to balance it. Um, now it's pretty much to the point where if I put a one gram aluminum nut, which this had a couple on it, um, it like doubles my values for how imbalanced it is. So it's very close. Uh, I'm gonna take it further though, cause I want it to be very smooth running. Uh, so this thing is set up to run 7,500 RPM, which is what this uh, thing spins at. And when this is balanced, um, 7,500 really doesn't seem, seem any different from a couple thousand. You can't really tell, except for the amount of wind put out by those fins. So I'm gonna go over the, uh, just the general balancing procedure that I'm using. So, uh, each one of these studs I've labeled 1 through 16, because there's 16 of them. Uh, that was because I thought I might use these to balance. I might still, uh, to do a fine tuning or something. Um, so, I've labeled them 1 through 16, and all I'm doing is using this zip tie to hold my phone vertically right here. Um, and using an app called Vibration Analysis, and it gives you... I have it set up to where it'll give me the RMS uh, of the vibration, so like the average kind of, um, so I can more accurately judge, because it's hard to tell with the spikes. If you went by peaks, it would be all over the place, but um, I mean, you could probably still get there, but. So what I do is I stick my phone in here, spin this up to maximum speed, because that's the only speed that I know is relatively repeatable with the drill. And whenever it's spinning maximum speed, I let it stabilize for a second, and uh, once it looks can like a continuous, you know, stable pattern on the uh, vibration analyzer, I stop the the stop it reading, stop collecting data, and then I screenshot that, and I say like if it's if I've got no weights on it, then uh, it'll just I'll just put zero. And then uh, what I did was just take a 10 gram test weight and put it at every location. So I just stuck a piece of polymer clay right inside one, two, three, four, all the way to 16. This takes a while. This, there is better ways to do this. I know that there's math to do this, but I am dumb. So <laughs> this is trial and error, but it works. And it's not super, super slow. Um, so like I could probably do a pretty decent job within a probably three hours, get it pretty balanced. But you know, since I'm learning this, how to do it, just basically making it up as I go, it takes a lot longer. Uh, so I take a 10 gram test weight, put it in there, um, run it up full speed, let it stabilize, stop the recording of the data and do a screenshot on my phone so that it shows me the RMS values of the vibration on all three axes, X, Y, and Z. And then I take, so I do that for every single number. I take all those photos in, I put them in uh, Google Sheets. I 
put them all in different columns, X, Y, and Z, one through 16. And then I use, and then I average the X, Y, and Z vibration. It seems like the, you could also, I also started out just adding them up, um, which works, but it seems better if I average them for some reason. I don't know why, it's just a gut, a gut thing. <laughs> But uh, I seem to be able to judge better when it's average. I don't know why. So I average those numbers and come up with like a number so that I can compare how it did at each location. And uh, once you find your best possible position on the wheel, 1 through 16, then you take that one spot and you vary the weight. And so you just, you know, cut it by half, cut it by half again, whatever, add more. Um, whatever you feel is right. It, you can kind of tell how much it's going to need based on how hard it vibrates. So this thing, you know, it was, I put 10 grams on and it helped, but it was still less than half of what I needed to balance it on this one side, actually both sides. So, but it tells you where you need to put the weight and then you vary the weight until it's as low as possible. So I did that on one side and then I did it on the other side. So I did one and then the other. And basically now... Uh, essentially both of them are done, uh, and then I'm going to do, I'm actually, I've done this one twice. I haven't set the second round of epoxy on here. Uh, then I'm going to do this one again, and, uh, that's pretty much the whole process. You can do it as many times as you want, and you can get there. It's not, you can for sure get a, something balanced to a reasonable degree using this method, you got to be, I mean, obviously you're going to be limited by your setup. So, you know, this is going to induce vibration. Uh, the pulley, the everything is going to induce some. Uh, but you can get pretty close like this. Um, I like to think that these stretchy O-rings uh, kind of limit the amount of vibration that is transferred. Um, I'm also assuming, you know, I hung this thing like <laughs> three feet from the top. So this thing can swing, essentially. Um, but I don't think that's necessary at all. You could hang this thing, um, you know, a, an inch. like. But you just have to have somewhere to mount your phone. So I would just, what if I were to redesign these, I would make some sort of bracket or something so that you could mount your phone, maybe on both ends. That way you could, uh, you know, check the vibration on both sides. Um, but yeah, uh, this works really good. I'm happy. Saved me 600 bucks, which is what they quoted me to uh, change the bearings and balance this thing. And I think it will uh, be way, way better because on my Fidal, whenever I had it up to 5,000 RPM, it shakes the floor. You can feel it in your feet. I walked across the house while it was running, which, you know, it's in my garage. So walked across the house and, uh, you know, the... <laughs> The uh, smoke detector is vibrating, like just rattling. And I was like, yeah, that's probably not correct. And that's what I, you know, I did, I've never owned a VMC. I don't know how vibration-y they should be, but it seems like it should be almost nothing. So, which is why I started balancing or took it apart and figured out that it, I thought it was the bearings. But the bearings were, I mean, they definitely need to be replaced. But, uh, which I already did. But it was more so the weights that had fallen off. So, yeah, that's pretty much the process. Uh, I'll probably put in some pictures of my Excel spreadsheet. And, uh, yeah, hopefully this helps someone save some money or time because the shop they quoted me 600 that was with a 40% XI or a, what do you call it, rush fee, rush charge, expedite fee, um, because otherwise it would have been an extra two weeks, so three weeks because everyone is, it's hard to, there's a shortage right now of motors and people are rebuilding instead of buying new. So hopefully this helps someone. You can put questions down below. I don't know if I'll answer them, <laughs> especially in a couple years. Cause I don't know. Anyone who's going to do this is going to be somewhat of a, uh, like me. So they probably muddle through. Anywho, thanks for watching.